In the game of manipulation, there is something called the classic bait and switch tactic. Your victim has something that you want, so you lure your mark in with an irresistible offer. Let's get married. Then, you do what's called love bombing, where you overwhelm your victim with loving words, actions and behaviors to sweep them off their feet so you can sink your teeth deeper into them. You lavish them with gifts, favors, you can't stop complimenting them, you give them your undivided attention. You get them to commit right here and now, and once their guard is down, you start to extract what's yours. But as soon as you have sucked all the blood you have from them, as soon as they are no longer of use to you, as soon as your priorities change, that is where the switch comes in. Divorce letter. Uh -huh. The favors suddenly come to a halt, you are no longer at their beck and call, you suddenly close the doors on them and you stop answering their calls. This, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what happened between two extremely successful Igbo Bologna businessmen in Nigeria. Cosmos Maduka, CEO of Koscharis Motors, net worth 800 million US dollars, and Ifa Yuba, CEO of Capital Oil, net worth 1.7 billion US dollars. The bottom the one. Although both businessmen are kinsmen and come from humble Beningans, all the way from Inewi in Anambra State, that is where the similarities end. One is fairly older and the other much younger. One very reserved and the other flamboyant as hell. One with the most pristine of reputations and the other, hmm, let's just say not the most pristine of reputations. One neck deep into oil and politics and the other, I focus on my business and in my religion. In this video, we'll learn about what started as a bromance between two Igbo brothers and how it culminated into an elaborate, sophisticated 21 billion naira scam or 256 million US dollars. Let's backtrack to the very beginning. December 24, 2008, Dr. Cosmas, older billionaire, turns 50 and there is a big party at his residence. Younger billionaire Ifai and his entourage pay a courtesy visit. You know, nothing serious, just two billionaires stepping outside. The two men never meet again until May 2011. Dr. Cosma sitting in his office receives a phone call from Ifani, with the latter claiming to be going through some difficulties. He is owing Union Bank and the bank was ready to foreclose on him. Norman Norman, as a kind, sensitive and loving older brother, Cosmas listened. Younger Bilonia, a skillful storyteller, knew all the right buttons to press and boy did he press them. Young and ambitious, check. Tribal sentiment, check. Victim game, check. I'm expecting something huge, check, 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 check. But what was it he wanted? What was the request? According to Ifai, he would like to obtain a line of credit that will enable him commence importation of petroleum premium spirit, PMS, also known as Petro. For those who don't know, a line of credit or LOC or supplier credit is when a trader obtains goods from a supplier on credit and then sell those goods for a profit. The trader then pays back the supplier at a later date and keeps the profit. Simple right? Wrong. It gets a little bit more complicated than that. Stay with me. For this kind of international business, there are usually two parties involved. A local trader and an international trader. A local bank and an international bank. The local trader backed by his local bank, orders for goods from his international exporter. His local bank issues a guarantee to his supplier's international bank that if the goods get shipped, we will pay you. Bank to bank. The international bank assures the international trader that if he ships the goods on credit, he will get paid once the goods hit the local market. There are other aspects of the business like insurance and sovereign debt notes, but I won't bore you with the details. This, in essence, was what Ifai wanted. The only problem was nobody was willing to lend Ifai money. Not the banks, not credit institutions, not his fellow billionaire friends, no one but Dr. Cosmas. To set the beat, Ifai invites Cosmas who travels to Inewe to pay a visit to the latter's tank farm. Safe to say, Koscharis was impressed. Call it willful ignorance, call it entrepreneurial intuition, 
Call it Kinsman Bond, but Dr. Cosmas was hooked and the deal was set. The banks will open a new line of credit for Ifai and Dr. Cosmas will guarantee this transaction. It was a deal made in hell. I tried to get the banks to support him and they were not willing to support him. So I said, okay, fine. I will guarantee the transaction. You put the credit under my name and I parted with over $300 million. Now, this is a man who's been accused of 22.4 billion naira in false subsidies and obviously is up to debt in $1 billion to banks and, you know, so many businesses. And you were warned. You know, and like they say, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Yeah. You, you, however, I see that you're a very sen sentimental and very uh, loving person. And yeah. I'm sure you took him on because you trusted he would pay back. Sure. Now, at what point did, you, did he begin to default? So let's summarize the business real quick. So the two businessmen agree on starting with a line of credit for a single consignment. A vessel load of petroleum premium spirit costs only about 30 to 35 million dollars. Ifai agrees to clear and pay back in 38 days. He cleared and paid back in 32 days. The second consignment rolled in and he cleared on time as well. The third consignment the fourth consignment, the fifth consignment. I didn't know it was a bet. But before December 2011, he came with six documents and said if I did this for him, that this is all that he, I would have done for him in life. We've done several transactions, about six, and they were all successful. At the time late, he paid at the correct period, no issue. So I did six documents at a time. And um, something I never had in my life in business history, it wasn't cash that I gave him. A letter of credit was opened from the bank, and then we had documents waiting for the consignment till today. The consignment never arrived in Nigeria. <laughs> the guy went abroad, um, connived with the shipping company. You know, he, he nominated the vessel and sold the consignment offshore. He shot you! So 21 billion naira crystallized in my account yielding interest of 300 million every month. It's like a man breathing to death. If you don't stop that breath, you can die. Welcome to OEF, the largest Nollywood digital film community. We combine innovation with technology to produce opportunities and access for an industry with a hard-working labor force of over 1 million people who collectively contribute a total of $7 billion to the Nigerian national economy every year. Our vision is to create a community of enablers, an ecosystem where big and small can find tremendous value with relentless efficiency. And this is dedicated it doesn't every... matter whether you're a production company freelancer, film lover or investor. If you're passionate about film, then OAF is home. Take a trip through our community. Find films that you like, invest. Want to learn? Instantly have access to thousands of courses from industry leaders who are doing its best. Start or run your creative business via the OAF Marketplace. Our, Our mission, mission is, is to, to amplify, amplify quality storytelling over, over quantity by technically and financially upskilling our fellow African storytellers. We are the platform for superstars. A famous Oxford professor, Timothy Morris, 
refer to reputation as the gap between expectation and experience and he created a reputation j curve which is in essence a parabola what it shows is that more reputation brings more reputation it starts with a low return but by continuing to invest in it we accumulate a vast amount over time which we can convert to goodwill sign any paper in the bank when that money was given and it crystallized. All my board members said, forget it. We will not, you know, ruin Koscharis because of this. After all, the LC was not opening Koscharis' name. We didn't sign any paper. This has nothing to do with us. You know, the bank gave the money. They should carry their responsibility. The guy who we gave the money is willing to and we finished the board meeting, everybody left. But I asked myself another strong question. Did the bank give this guy money because of his merit or do they give him money because of me? And the answer was clear. Obvious, they gave him money because of me. And all my life I preached integrity and I was subjected to this test. I called the managing director of the bank. I said, send me that paper. And he sent me the paper and I signed it. I went home that day, I jumped up, oh, I won, I won, I won. My wife said, you won? Where's the lottery? When did you become a gambler? What did you win? I said, I won. She asked me again, I said, I won. She said, what do you mean? Please be serious. I said, I signed that paper. She screamed, said, you signed? I said, yes, I signed. I pursued the guy by constitutional right that I have only in February 19, 2014. I got Amcon paid 16 billion naira out of that money. I ultimately lost about 9 or 10 billion naira both on interest rate and then the real money. Hi, watch till the end club. Thank you very much for sticking with me this far. If you just enjoy what you just watched, please smash that subscribe button, drop a like, Enter the comment section as well and tell me what you think. Uh, I really enjoy making these videos and I hope to be making a lot more. If you're new here, I drop a video once a month. Um, although that schedule is a little bit, uh, you know, help me scrap it aside for now. The videos will drop as soon as they are ready. And hopefully as we get to, you know, know each other some more and we can figure out a schedule. My name is Emmanuel Ogo. I am a creative director and a storyteller. This is a Christmas bonus. Um, the regular video will still drop sometime in two weeks, hopefully. But like I said, I'm just experimenting at the moment. I also don't know what to expect. So just fingers crossed. Regarding the Ifan Yuba versus Cosmos Maduka case, uh, 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 <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm really speechless at this point. I've watched all the interviews online from both parties and if you're wondering why there are no interview clips of Ifa Yuba perhaps defending himself there are actually a lot of them online and i'll link them in the comment section below i've watched them but in my humble opinion Ifa Yuba is just yanning dust you know he's guilty as 